Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the studio. And welcome back. If you were watching earlier, I'm making my way to the back. I gotta grab my um, my glaze bucket here. I'm mixing up a glaze, and I was just uh, warming up some. Uh, hey, Canuck, warming up some um, Epsom salts in water, and adding that to my glaze. It's a step I always forget, but it really does help uh, the glaze particles stay suspended in water. So, the way I mix up these glazes... There we go, you can see there a little bit. I've got my bucket of dry ingredients soaking in water down here. I don't know if you can see any more now. And then um, I wonder if I should just move this forward a little bit. I've got my mostly empty bucket of black glaze here that I'm going to be mixing everything into. And this is a uh, it's a, a sieve. So I've got a, it's like an 80 mesh screen maybe. I forget what, what mesh of screen this is in here. And um, so I can pour the glaze into this. And there's brushes here that will force the glaze through the screen so it gets mixed properly so I don't have any little chunks left behind. Boys, Mom, good evening. Yeah, welcome back. So before I pour this in here, though, I'm going to mix it up with my drill. So... You can see some of that coming up there. It's, it's still super chunky. There we go. So so just mixing this stuff with a um with a drill is not gonna like mix it up very well. It all just kind of breaks up some of the bigger chunks. So it's like it's super chunky. It's like cottage cheese. So you know what I'm gonna do? Instead of like lifting it all the way up here and hurting myself, I'm gonna take the bucket to the floor and just lift it a little bit. Do that. Then I can lift this back up here and it's not back breaking. Here we go. Hey Otterfay! Let's move over here where I can see. And How very sensible. Sometimes. As my father would say, even a blind pig gets an acorn every once in a while. Every once in a while I have a good idea. You know, it's it's really hard to enunciate old sayings like that. Because you don't ever hear anybody enunciate them. It's even a blind pig gets an acorn every once in a while. All right, now it's not as heavy. But it's thick. Looks like a, a large food mill, yes. Probably like a, the same principle. I'm just, just forcing it, you know, through smaller holes. Oh no, Liam, um, hamster's not here. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just here tonight. Uh, I don't know if he's uh, watching right now, actually. Hey, El Minotaur. <whistles> Liam, how are things where you are? Are you are you still like crazy busy? Are you still doing like the twelve hours on, twelve hours off? Or wait, you weren't even getting that much time off. All right, let's get some more in here. And then I'll add some water to that bucket and get some of the dregs out of it. I think I splattered it on my glasses. I'm seeing spots. Oh good, I'm glad it slowed down a bit. That was crazy. I'm going to take this off. It's getting on my nerves. I don't know if I can get it off right now. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, there we go. Now remember that it's right there. I'm going to lose it and never remember it again. Don't remember where I put it. This is going to be the black, the glossy black. This one. Okay, oh wait, do I have anything in this? No, it's empty, good. Look, I remember drinking out of this a couple weeks ago, and I forgot, like, oh, it might be scary on the inside. But this one, uh, this is the solid black. Glossy black. This is so thick. Almost like, wonder if I miscounted on on the uh, uh, on the my, uh, cups of water I put in here, but I don't think I did. It's filling it up. The black, we don't do as much with the black by itself, but we layer other colors on top of it. it may, it's a really good base glaze. Let me uh, get some water to add to that. I thought I had a bottle here that I could use. So I'm getting some of the, the chunky bits out of the bottom here. Some of the stuff that was stuck to the side. Rinsing it out. Trix is coming to help me. I gave you a spot to come sit. I 
So if you're just joining us, uh, we've uh, tried something new today in as far as the, the music goes. We're trying um, the Amazon Music uh, little widget. So if you see it popped up there on your screen um, and you're an Amazon Prime member, then you can uh, listen to the music we're listening to, but I'm not actually streaming it, so that's a way to listen to music that uh, and not like infringe upon anyone's copyright. It's a cool little feature that we found out about today, and we're trying out. I know it doesn't work very well on mobile, so that's that's the only downside right now. That and and like we have the uh, Amazon, I guess, unlimited. So unless you have that, you, some of the songs might be blocked out, I think. So it's not, it's not perfect, but it was something we wanted to try out. Trying to get all that last little bit out of there. I'm not going to be cleaning black glaze off of black hat. I'm going to go set this in the bucket so the screen can soak. Still a little bit goopy right now. I'll have to mix it up a little bit more. Got black glaze everywhere now. Even on my glasses. There we go. Get some of it off. Yeah, you can't can't see her all that well. Here, here you go. There, there. Now it's more like a cat. She's she's extremely curious. She's trying to figure out what I've been doing here. And she doesn't really mind the uh, the mixer. All right, you ready? rest of this in there. I always mix it a little bit thicker than I think I'll need and then add water. So this is one of the uh, first glazes I'll be working with here. I need to touch up this one a little bit. I forgot about this one earlier. Violet, yeah. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Trix. And she's torn between curiosity and being mad at me for not letting her back outside. <laughs> I 
Really? Like, normally I wouldn't let her drink out of that bucket, but it's it's fairly fresh. Like, I just emptied it out, cleaned it out. So it's not going to hurt her. Which is actually the only reason she's drinking out of it when it's, uh, like, got all the, the glaze scraps in it. She She won't touch it. Oh, Liam, yeah, well, good morning then. Wow. So how easy is it to remove my wheel, the wheel head from the pottery wheel? Would having one that's fairly easy to remove being a good thing? I have honestly never tried. I have never tried. Um, so it's one of those things that I know it probably can be done on all of them. I just don't know how hard it is. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of a reason that you might need to like take one on and off, you know, versus having it permanently there. I think it's, for me, like, that the practicality of it all is, like, being able to put things on top of the wheel head. Instead of take it off and replace it with, like, a different surface, like, have the bat pins there where you can, um... I don't know. What did she do? I don't know. All I saw was flying cat. Where'd you go, honey? She didn't run off. <laughs> She's going to go be mad in the corner. That's how I, I've lost a bucket of glaze before. A cat knocking over, like, a, overbalancing and tipping over a bucket of glaze. Was I guess the lid was, like, hanging off or something. I guess it was. Ugh. I'm going to do this and just see if I can carefully wipe this down. I don't want to sit here and, like, take the time to paint in all these letters and numbers. Like, I'll touch up some if I need to, but I'm done with that. So I'm trying to clean up my mug here. There we go. That's not too bad. One little spot I need to touch up. Like, I did all of this, or a lot of this earlier. That's what my entire stream was earlier, was all the, the touching up and the filling in of the uh, medallions and stuff. But there's that one. Another F COVID 19 mug. Now, what color should this be? I've got a blue one. I've got green ones. And, um... I do want Sweet Pea. I can do that. Sweet Pea is good. Move that one. Then there's two of these that I need to do. She she wasn't too traumatized, I don't think. Hey Keith, welcome back. The scut is just a pin across the drive shaft and has a, like a matching groove in the head, but you don't know much about it, like much reason for it apart for cleaning. It could be cleaning. I guess it could be if you were going to like change it out, maybe. Like what are the reasons you would change one out? Like I don't I don't think they break that easy, but maybe if you wanted to change it out for size, like get a different size of, of wheel head. But it seems like with that, it's easier to alter the... Um, Like, uh, alter the surface, you know, like put a bat on top of it, so. My, my, uh, little squirt bottle is clogged. I'm looking for one of my little wires that I, I clean it out with.
I have to make a new one. It's a super high tech process. I'm sure I'll find like three of them after I do this. Because my little squirt bottles are, are so, uh, the tips are so narrow, the best thing to like, a paper clip is sometimes too thick to, to clean them out, so I've uh, taken to like stripping a, a bread tie. Like a platter, is that like a reason for removing the wheel head? Th that would be more of like a reason to put something on top of it to make it bigger. Like, I don't know. Here we go. Hey, we gonna try this again? Oh, wow, you're not going to have time for much sleep, but thank you for stopping by, Liam. Have a good evening, or morning. Have a good morning. So that, that's what I use. I, I strip of, like I said, a strip of bread tie <laughs> so I can clean these guys out. And what I'm doing with this one is I'm using my blue glaze to fill in uh, the TARDIS. So, I again, I forgot to do this earlier. The police box is one of the only things that uh, we don't do just specifically in black because the, the denim blue here is a nice um, kind of medium dark blue and it works so well. It's, it's, a, it's a good TARDIS blue. So anything with a police box on it, I fill in with this color instead of the black. Say that the, the reason uh, what's the, the reason the splash pan ones with just a hole are cheaper than the split one? Really? See, I like the ones that that are in one piece better because the ones that are um that come in two pieces usually like end up leaking when you don't want them to. But I don't really know what the uh, reason would have been. Here we go. So we've got that one, and we'll put wax on top of it, but we'll have a blue, poli blue police box. Okay, we'll just do the one of them. We'll wax these two, and then I'll get started uh, putting the glaze on them. Oh, the reason to remove the head is if you want to change the splash pan. Oh, okay. See, mine's in one piece. My my splash pan is in one piece, but it uh, but it but it comes off. See that that seems like more trouble than it's worth having to to remove the the wheel head.
Here we go. Do we have any happy hookers here tonight with your crochet hook? Oh, so right, yeah, the um, your wheel head, what well, the way it's made, it's just a long shaft with the, with the tread on the end. Yeah, like, I, I've, I've never changed out a wheel head. I've only even considered it because um, one of the wheels that I have, I purchased, uh, used, and it had, like, I got it really cheap. It had been sitting out in somebody's yard for who knows how long. It's a, a wheel that's, the parts are mostly plastic on it. So the wheel head was actually warped. Um, but I, I cut some of it off and I've just, I just put bats on top of it. So there really was no reason, like it was level and, and working. It's just that the surface on the top was kind of bubbled. So I just, I just put bats on top of it and it's fine. All right. We just mixed this up. We start with this one being solid black. Yeah, because every tool I've ever seen is made instead of to replace a wheel head to go on top of it. I don't think it's really expected you remove it a lot. But, you know, I, I've never used, I, I don't have experience with all the different types of wheels that are out there. This stuff is so thick. I might need to add some water to this. Hey, Spook, welcome back. I'm going to get another bottle of water and add to this. So there are ways to measure the like specific gravity of something to tell how much water is, you know, in it. Water versus glaze is in it. And if I was smart, I would measure each of my buckets and, and test them. But if this glaze is a little bit too thick or even too thin, it's not going to like drastically change things. It, it's a good stable glaze. So we've got some wiggle room here. We're being watched. Oh my gosh, we're being watched a lot. <laughs> I 
What are you doing? That feels a little bit better. Whoops. We'll be knocking things over now. Gonna make sure Trix is in frame. So this is Trix. Her, her full name is Bellatrix. But we call her Trix. Yeah, she, she sometimes lives up to her name. She can be pretty mean. But she's gotten used to us now, I think. She's brought me a mouse. She, she has claimed me as her human. You know, she, she brought the mouse. Minnie brought me a lizard today. So... I have been given a gift today, just not by tricks. When, uh, when the weather's nice outside like it is right now, we usually leave our doors open during the day and have the windows open to get a breeze. Front and back windows. Front, front windows, back doors. You can try to figure it out. I'm not really sure she knows how to get down. Have I moved too much stuff? Sorry, guys, that was me. Have I moved too much stuff on you? You want to come here? Well, I was going to help you down. You're fine to stay up there. I just don't want her like jumping in the middle of all my stuff over here. She is like two and a half years old. She is one of the kittens that was born here in the studio. She she's an extreme foster fail because I gave her away and then they brought her back and I, now I've got her again. Now you just get to see a cat lump. <laughs> Everything's shaking because she jumped from one table to the other on the top. She tries to be careful, but she she's not um not all that graceful. Whew. There's all my lights. There she is. So that as I, I dip the pieces in the glaze and let them dry, there, there's a, a very like slight sound that's made by the, uh, gl the water from the glaze being absorbed into the porous pots. So they sit here and they kind of fizzle a little bit. And so that she's over here like sniffing the wet pots. So I'm, I'm sure she's got black glaze on her somewhere um, because they're, they're making a sound. Phew. 
sometime maybe maybe I should let her back outside. She wants to go outside again, but I'm not gonna. Uh, she gets to go outside all day. If she goes outside again at night, then usually I can't find her again. She stays out all night because I'm not about to try to find and chase a black cat in the dark. Oh, your your cat exploded a bird. Oh no, what happened? Like, had I don't know how a cat explodes a bird. We're met. Good afternoon or good evening. Sorry, good evening, guys and numbers. Welcome back if you were watching earlier or just welcome to the studio. Here's one with uh, the leaf texture on it. This is the, uh, we are in Kentucky and this is going to one of my shops in uh, uh, Lexington. I'm still waiting to hear how a bird explodes by a cat. Maybe maybe it's just just a way to say that the death and dismemberment. It could be. Maybe, maybe there were just cat parts everywhere. I mean, uh, not cat parts, bird parts everywhere. I, I can see that. Though actually, my cats, whenever they kill something and eat it, they tend to be very clean about it. Oh yeah, yeah. You'd like to travel here? Kentucky is very pretty. It is a a lot of most of Kentucky is very rural. So you've got like a lot of uh, the hiking trails, a lot of farmland. You've got mountains on one side and then a lot of farmland uh, to the west. We have uh, Mammoth Cave, which is one of the largest, is it one of the largest cave systems in, was it North America? I don't even know the stats anymore, but uh, we have Mammoth Cave that you can go do tours on and a lot of national parks around here. We're actually not, uh, we're about an hour from Mammoth Cave right now. We're close enough to it that we forget about it until somebody says, hey, we want to come visit. And we're like, yeah, we'll take you up to Mammoth, Mammoth Cave. Like when, uh, uh, when we first got married, we lived up like right on the outskirts of Mammoth Cave. So we would just go to the, the, uh, the park because you can do it. You can go up there for free and just walk in all the very well-kept trails, take bikes or just walk. So we'd go up there all the time and go hiking. You up <coughs> you left a crack in the sliding door in case you wanted to go out and you think the bird got in and then they played with it because the bird bits and feathers were everywhere. And I yes, now now that you mention that. I, Minnie did that one time. Like, normally she brings something in and uh, she announces it and she wants praise for whatever she's got and then she wants to play with it. Well, when it's a bird, we get it back outside. Usually it's not dead. So we try to get it back outside. If it's dead, then we just take it and throw it away because, it, you know, that's going to be a mess. But one time we, we ran out for a second and we left our back door open. Because we're in a small town and you can do that. We left the back door open and like we left and then came back like 20 minutes later. Not not long at all. <laughs> I came back and it was the same thing. There were feathers everywhere in the front of the studio. Everywhere. She was so proud of herself.
Yeah, I had a friend who was in a Florida who he did a road trip from Florida to Colorado. Okay, he wanted to see as much of the U.S. as he could in this road trip. And so he was taking pictures of things he found in each state that he thought represented each state. And what did he take a picture of in Kentucky? Cows. Cows. Not even horses, just cows. Hey, polyester kid. How are you doing? Oh, it's the largest system in the world. Okay. I could not remember. You say a road trip would be your top wish? That there's too much America to road trip? Uh, well, there, there is. There's too much to see in like one trip. You would be just exhausted. But a road trip is a road trip. You just, you know, pick a direction. Pick which, which section you want to go see, you know? We normally would drive across country, um, basically from Kentucky to California, uh, like twice, at least once, sometimes twice a year for shows. And we always um, would take time to stop somewhere on the route, like on our way home to just say, we, you know, do something touristy and say we've done something. We've gotten to visit the uh, giant redwoods up in California. We've gotten to go to Yellowstone Park. Um, I want to say, was it up in Estes Park, I guess, or I uh, forget Winter Park, maybe Winter Park, Colorado? I think that's what it was. We went up there one year. Um, a couple of different places, but yeah, so, so we can say we've, we've been to and done some different things. Went to uh, Grand Canyon one year. Didn't get to stay but like one day, though. Oh, Minotaur, you know, they, oh, they say you shouldn't throw away the gift they bring you, so you made it look like uh, you were proud of her and disposed of it when she wasn't looking, yeah. We're probably not good at that. We, we praise, but then, like, uh, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather know where the dead bird is rather than have it die in a corner somewhere. Polyester Kit, weren't you glazing yesterday? Or was that another time? That everything runs together. I'm just getting started applying the glaze. We did a lot of the prep work earlier today, and then um, now I'm, I'm, I mixed up this glaze, and then i um, doing my first layer of dips. Actually, I don't know what color this needs to be. I don't think, I don't know if it's blue or not, um, black and blue. Let's see. Ten ounce mug, uh, a woman's place. Sunrise. So it it does need to be dipped in the black, but I'm gonna put it over here with the rest of these, so I don't get it confused.
Oops. Yeah, and if you're just joining us and you want to hear the music, we're we're trying a new thing. We uh, we learned today that you could, uh, if you have Amazon uh, Prime or Amazon Music, then um, you might see the little widget in the corner. If you if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can um, listen to the music with us that I'm listening to, and you can control your own volume and everything, and. Um, so we can hear the same music without me having to stream that music and we can listen to whatever we want to without worrying about copyright infringement. So it is only if you have an Amazon Prime account. But um, I don't think it works on mobile, so it's not perfect, but we're going to try it for a little while. You did some of the like under glazes and some clear stuff. Nice. I've seen people do really interesting patterns with that. So here's one of the uh, newer ones we're doing. This is for uh, one of my shops up in Lexington. It is the Kentucky Bourbon Molecule in the shape of Kentucky. Raspberry tea, you just blasted yourself with music. Was it the music that we've got playing here? I'm sorry. Well, welcome, everybody. Oh, it was funny. Good. <laughs> yeah, because I think it, we have it up full blast, but you can control the volume. Somebody I just followed like three times with three different names. Um, is it a free use of any music with Prime? Um, there is the Amazon Prime music, and then there's like a one above that that's unlimited, where you get you can listen to any music. We're, we've got the unlimited. Is there still a limit of three extensions? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. That'd be a question for Hamster. What What extensions are you talking about? Oh, oh, you mean extensions as far as things that you're doing? I can hear it because I've got it on my computer. Yes, it's just not playing through the stream. It's free use of music if you. Don't play it through the stream if you listen to it and l you can allow other people to listen to it as well at the same time through the stream. I I'm still new to the, uh, to the extensions to all the little things you can do, so... Um so either I may not be explaining it right or I may just be repeating what, what you're already saying.
like I said, it's it works well because, you know, when we go back, we go back to the um, last video, there's not going to be any music there, so nothing's going to be muted, but um, it doesn't work on mobile, and um, you have to have an Amazon Prime account to hear the music. You appreciate being able to control the volume. That's what Colleen said earlier, too. But Colleen was telling us that, like, she has Amazon Prime. We have Amazon Prime Music Unlimited, whatever it's called. So not all the songs that we're playing she could hear because she only has Prime Music. So there's there's a difference there. But we we don't see which songs can are are played and which ones are not as far as, like, if it's, like, I hear all of them. I don't know which ones are blocked out. Because I was thinking, like, I need to make, like, a playlist where I know they're all on Amazon Prime so everybody can hear them. But I'm not sure, like, how difficult that would be. But yeah, we were in, uh, like, Paul Pape's channel earlier today and somebody was talking about the, uh, um, th this, uh, this widget. All right, Spook, have a good night. I guess somebody I followed just a few minutes ago with um with diff with different names, like somebody followed like three different accounts with the similar names. It was like show your feet, show your toes, show your souls. And I'm like, I know, I know how this works. Wasn't there a streamer not too long ago who was given like twenty five thousand dollars to show her feet on stream? I'm like, for twenty five thousand dollars, I would do that. Somebody can look at my hairy feet all they want to. So I, I know the cost of that. Now, some more of these need to be the black glaze, but I'm going to uh, glaze two little black sheep here. And these little guys, um, the faces need to be the, the raw color of the clay. So they need to be white. So I don't want to dip this thing entirely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the new stamp. Uh, not everything is stamped, but uh, some of the last couple batches got stamped. I'm going to hold it like this. Let that dry a little bit, and then I'll touch up the insides and, and around the face. It is a shiny black. It's a glossy black. Because sometimes I just do uh, a black face on, on some of the sheep and uh, just leave it with the underglaze. So it's it's a matte versus a glossy contrast. But yeah, this is the black glaze that I use on everything. It's the, the glossy black. 
it's a uh, it's super shiny the I, I tested a matte black at one point and that I don't know why the matte black is super runny like I tried layering colors with it and nope nope it's it it wants to be by itself you do not layer with it probably well maybe you can but not maybe not as thickly as I did my my tests were like stuck to everything so it didn't do what I wanted it to Let's see, where is my scraper? Where did it go? There it is. Oh, is that what happens if the music gives a it gives a sample and then it stops if they just have a, a prime? Okay, that's what it does. That's what uh, Colleen had said, but I didn't know that it, I didn't know that it gave a sample. So polyester kit, do you like the matte glazes or the shiny glazes better? Yes, dragon. I made a uh, um, a sweet pea, so a purple, a green, and blue uh, sheep. So you can order them in any color you want. That's the first time I'd made a multicolored sheep. Usually, I've made like solid color sheep, like like a blue or a pink or a red. Yeah, I'm more of a fan of the shiny glazes. It, like, except for one of my favorites is the uh, the one I make myself here. That's kind of a, it's more of a satin. It's got a little bit of a shine to it, but it's not super glossy. I don't I don't really like the the completely matte glazes because they're they're a little bit rough. I'll go get it. Sometimes you like to use the glossy and the matte on the same piece. Does that not, like, do you have to be very careful or it runs? Like, what was it? I did, um, I tried to do some glossy colors on top of the matte, and that's what ran like crazy. Oh, there he is. I moved him.
behold the sweet pea sheep. Sweet pea bowl, but a sheep. Someone said he looked like he'd gone swimming and, and he uh, uh, had been bleached. One sheep, two sheep, teal sheep, mauve sheep, yep. Yeah, it reminds you of the sheeps that get dyed so the farmers know which ones are theirs, yes. It's a way to tag them. You've used uh, the Amico blue mat with a celadon, and it was no problem. Nice. I was probably uh, applying things too thick because I, I mix my opulence glazes um, thicker than that is suggested because I like the way they, they cover when they're a little bit thicker. So that may have been my been, may have been my problem. We got six more mugs here to be black. And all the mugs that are on this table, which you can't see all of them, but um, I've got three different uh, sections here for three different colors. They're not all going to be the same color, though they start with the same base of this black color. I remember when I get done with these to, to touch up my uh, little black sheep here.
So here is a double-sided mug, a uh, D20 on one side and the uh, D21. It's going to be the Arizona Sunrise. And this is for uh, Twitch user like Zilla Ray. Like I, I just call them Ray, because I don't know if that's how you say their name or not, but it begins with an X. Ah, I forgot there was water in there. Arg. I don't think it'll hurt anything. And this is a, uh, a custom order. It says, uh, Knit on with confidence and hope through all crises by Eliz Elizabeth Zimmerman. All right, so now I can uh, pick these up and uh, handle them. There, there's not much to touch up there, but I want to go ahead and put some glaze on there. And then same thing, there's not much to touch up on the, uh, the sides. but then I'll give him some hair. And 
and then go over some of those areas one more time just because it's it's a dark glaze and for every like dipped layer they say to do like two painted layers at least two to three there we go so now we've given, given him some hair color and then I will give him uh, some uh, blue eyes and uh, put some pink in his ears and give him some rosy cheeks There we go. Little black sheep number two. And I think that should uh, do it for the black for now. I need uh, to pick my next color, which will probably be gray. Because I have to layer uh, several colors on top of the gray. Oh, hi, Minnie. Mm -hmm. She chirps with everything she does, so she, she announces her presence. Hey. Oh, come here. Maybe. Maybe. And cuddles all that bad. I guess they are. Looking around, I thought I had a drink back here, but I guess I moved it. Oh, you're drawing your sister's cat right now. What what kind of cat do they have? Or what type of uh, drawing are you doing? Are you doing a like a realistic drawing, a cartoon, an illustration? She had air bubble. But this is the gray now. So this is the uh, the storm gray, the um, base color for the stormy skies, and the unicorn farts. Realistic portrait type, nice. It's a fluffy cat with lots of colors. We have a fluffy cat at home, we call her Fuzzy because we're very original and creative with our names. She was a stray cat that came up, so we didn't really like name her. We just kept calling her Fuzzy Butt and, and she stayed around, so she was Fuzzy.
You know, Vader's still with us. He's still hanging in there. He's just, he doesn't move very fast. He can't see. He's our, um, he's almost 16 years old. He, um, he's blind. And we have to, we feed him wet food because he can't eat that well. I don't think he's got all his teeth. But he, he's got, he, when he has good days, he has good days and bad days, but when he has his good days, he's, he's high in spirits and he's like, you know, he feels good enough to be a jerk because he's a cat. When he's super annoying, we know he feels good. But yeah, he's still with us about a year after they told us we, you know, if we couldn't get him to eat, it was, it was in November of last year, yeah. Um, they told us if we couldn't get him to eat, then he would, uh, there wouldn't be much we could, they could do, you know. And so we fed him everything we could. But it was hilarious last night. It might, was it last night? It might not have been last night. But we had like, so we let the cats into the bedroom with us. And they sometimes will sleep on the bed or at least cuddle for a little bit. And one of the cats, like Fuzzy, was like, tried to jump on the bed and she missed for whatever reason she missed so there was like you know thunk thunk scratch 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 and then thunk thunk on the ground you know so and so we were looking over to see if she was okay see what happened if there was a fight um what was happening and then suddenly then she tried again <laughs> and the second jump she almost like over she overcorrected too much and she almost went over the bed <laughs> is how how hard she jumped and it was hilarious because you just see like you know flying squirrel white fluff above you know above you <laughs> it's like it all happened so fast you just see this white fluff going over the bed <laughs> She, no, she's not old. We she was a stray that came to us. I think we've had her about as long as we've had Minnie. Like we we acquired a lot of cats all at the same time within like a six month time frame. So I would say she's if Minnie's three, she's probably three to four. You know, same age. No, she's not old. She she's she's young. I've, I've just never seen a cat overcorrect like that before. <laughs> they they know to come find us, right? We we've got the, the big sign in the yard that says sucker. So these guys are going to be the unicorn farts, and then um, the others are going to be the uh, stormy skies, or maybe just solid gray. So the actual glazing is not what takes the, the longest amount of time. I'm just, you know, dunking things in a bucket, right? It's, it's all the prep work and then, then the cleaning and, and straightening up, making sure that everything, uh, the glaze is where it's supposed to be. It's not too thick or too thin. It's a gnat. Oh, you, you like the hairless cats? Yeah, those might be like hard to harder to find though, right? You have to get those from a breeder. Oh, whoops. I didn't wax this side.
So I'll let that one sit for a second. They look like gremlins or aliens. Yeah, they're, they're so ugly, they're cute. This one will probably be uh, just solid gray, because it's the uh, Stark Dire Wolf. Moose! Yeah, glazing again! Yeah, so tomorrow I will fire this glaze, and so probably during the day, so Saturday sometime I'll be able to open it up. But I want to do uh, this one today and then um, do an, uh, start on another one tomorrow. Do two days of glazing. You you would be covered in glaze by the time you went home. Well, that that's one one reason I wear an apron. But then also like my pants tend to be I'm, I'm wearing long pants now, and and they tend to be covered in glaze like around the. Let's see there. Just uh, around the base, and because I get get splattered, especially when I'm mixing things. Yeah, so so I do get covered. I, I walk around like pig pen. Can never think of this song without thinking about Weird Al. And I was thinking, like, you know, we need a Weird Al playlist.
So we got the solid gray. All right, Dragon Nits, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. Now for the um, unicorn ones, I do need to add another layer here. And to do that, I'm just going to dip the rim because I need the gray to be a bit thicker around the top so that the pink will uh, properly blend with it. And I found this out by like trying to figure out why some batches of glaze worked better with unicorn farts and why some batches of glaze worked better with the uh, uh, stormy skies. Because the stormy skies needs a little bit thinner of a glaze, so I, I mixed the glaze up for stormy skies and then just uh, double dip for the unicorn. All right. Let's see if I see my drink anywhere. No. What next? I need to do um, red and green and purple. I'm going to see where purple is. I bet it's the one furthest back in there that I can't see. it is. The one in the very far back. Right, it's amazing what you find out through trial and error. Well, and that's kind of how we, um, you know, experiment with some of the glazes. Just say, okay, well, this color and this color. I've never tried that before. Like, you never could have told me that the uh, the uh, red and the green, the green over the red would have made blue. Never would have tried that before. But now it's one of my most popular colors. So we're going to do the sweet pea first. This is the uh, the green, blue, and purple. So it's going to look similar to this one. And I'm going to do purple like to the, uh, um, with this one, if it was a regular mug, I would do purple up to the, uh, like the, the top of the body of the mug before the rim. But with the travel mug, I'll probably just bring the purple up to about an inch below the rim. The Sweet Pea and the uh, Starry Night, those are, I would say, the two most popular colors I have.
And Unicorn Farts is very close behind that this year. I think it'll be interesting to look on the, the analytics because since we've done most of our business, right, you know, this year online, we, we can uh, um, tell which colors are being custom ordered because I've been very surprised at, at some of the colors, some of the popularity of some of the colors that I don't do that often. And while it's still true that I'm not going to, like, make a bunch of orange things to, to take to a show and hope that they sell, but we, we sell a surprisingly large amount of orange or, um, like, the, uh, the denim and white and the seafoam. We sell a lot of those online. But they're not, not the most popular. <gasps> oh, it don't matter. Don't matter. Oh. I meant that to be Sweet Pea, but now it's going to be Hocus Pocus. Doesn't really matter. But I just need to not grab the tongs. Why did I grab the tongs? Because I put the sponge back in here in the bucket and just automatically grabbed the tongs. Yeah, because when we normally go to a show, we uh, we have sections set up where we can put down, it's a 20-ounce mug, it's a sweet pea, it's a fandom mug. We don't put down egg exactly what it is, but, um, but this way we can. We can see, you know, the uh, what category everything's in, you know, how many Star Wars mugs did we sell. Like, we know right now that the uh, best-selling item, best-selling category is Lord of the Rings right now on the website. Sometimes it's scary how much information we can get off of ju just our, you know, simple website. Right with all the Star Wars stuff, but that that's what it is. What happens if you glaze over the glaze? Like, which one? The one that I messed up? If, if I really needed to fix that one, then I could just wipe all the glaze off of it. If that was the only one I had and it needed to be a specific color and I messed it up, I would just wipe the glaze off. Like a lot of the, the glazes I'm doing here, it's going to be like one color over another color. So I will be layering them. But um, so that, that works fine. Like I I've n wouldn't layer like more than three, I think, on top of a, on, on a single piece because that just, the glaze gets so thick then. It's going to get really runny no matter what it is, even if it's not a runny glaze. You know, I think that, you know, the only way I think the data might be skewed is that the top selling category right now is Lord of the Rings, but that may have been because we only put in categories, what, in the past couple months? So I was just thinking about that with all the Star Wars things. It's like, 
we sold a lot of the Star Wars things as individual in stock items. I don't know how we categorize those, so we'll have to go back and look. So, so there's there's going to be some uh, some skewed data here and there, but we'll be able to see you know which 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 color we sold the most of, and you know, like fandom versus the the, the Yarny mugs. I hope so, yeah. Got the data, now I gotta figure out how to use it. Yeah, we've got to get some more of the Star Wars things uh, up because it doesn't the Mandalorian come out at the end of this month? I keep meaning to look this up. I don't know if it's a reference to something or if it's just kind of, like, it doesn't seem, like, very uplifting. It says, be, beware of unintended consequences. Nope, no tongs. So ominous, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have a maroon. No, I have um, the red over the blue. It gets kind of maroon, but it's not. Um, but it's not a color I do by itself. I have by itself. I wouldn't even call the iron glaze anything like maroon. It's more, it's more brownish, like iron red than uh, than than like my shirt kind of. Yeah, beware of unintended consequences is ominous, but be aware of unintended consequences sometimes. It might sound a little bit better. What, what's an Aggie?
All right, now I can start dipping things in solid purple. I'm going to move this. Oh, okay, Texas A&M, okay. I need to look again into making collegiate things like except for the really big schools like a lot of the uh, smaller schools are, are very reasonable for as far as like yearly like fees to be able to, to sell merchandise. Like for uh, for the most like I think it was like for a couple hundred dollars a year like you can get a uh, pick three or four schools. So basically for a hundred dollars per school, you can uh, uh, get a license to, to make, make licensed products or whatever, well, whatever, whatever it's called. But like around here, I was looking at the list of schools that were like, you know, participating in, in programs and it was uh, a lot of the smaller schools around here you, you could do with that with, but then if you wanted to sell UK University of Kentucky things or University of Tennessee things, you had to go directly through them. I don't, I don't know how much that costs, but I've considered it. <laughs> yeah, you'd buy one. It'd be so small, you'd be the only customer. Really, it they're more um, picky about, like, the sports logos. Like, I've made things for different, for, for our local university, where, like, it was, like, for the university libraries, you know, with their logo, specific logo. Or the, or the different collegiate, you know, logos. They really don't care about that. Just the uh, sports-affiliated things. So the ones I'm dipping in solid purple here are going to be the Hocus Pocus, the, the black over purple. And then a yarn bowl. And I just dripped 
glaze on my toes. It went between the prongs on my sandals. Charlie, hey! Thank you. Thank you for the resub. Right, Glazy Feet might give me that 25000 right? $25,000, I would dip my foot in the glaze bucket. So they say, yeah, well, I would do that. Somebody came in here talking about feet earlier, and it reminded me of the, the streamer that got paid $25,000 to show her feet on stream. Not not anything else, just, just take off her socks and shoes and, and show the feet. <laughs> Marcia, you excitedly told your husband that the pumpkin doubles as a yarn bowl. Yeah, and he was confused because you don't knit, but you're just excited that it was functional even if you won't use it that way. There you go. I need to put a little hole in the top or something so it can be used as a tissue holder or something. It's 25K, it's 25K, right? Say thank you for supporting the studio and go on. You want to see my cat's feet too? I'll do that. That'll be a bit more of a struggle. Oh, Buckles! Oh no, so Daniel's not here. H Wonder Hamster is not physically in the building. So we'll have to do that tomorrow. So I'm so sorry. We can also, we can refund you the bits or, or the, the Kiba Kibbles or, or we can do this tomorrow. Will you be able to watch tomorrow? We, we will make sure you get a pun and it will be a bad one. What next? The green, I guess, which is right there. All right, so this is the uh, dark emerald green, and we've got some pieces over here. Some of these actually all need to be solid dipped in, in the green, and then I'll uh, decide later which ones need to be uh, um, layered with other colors.
So this color is uh, uh, a very dark green. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but it is. I don't think I missed the bucket there. Uh, it is this color, nice dark green color. Breaks nicely over texture because it's very uh, transparent. Yeah, that was a, a test mug. We never really did anything else with it, but I tried doing the uh, uh, like, like dragon scale mugs. Got a slithering mug. Do I get tiny unglazed spots where the tongs sit? Yes. But, <coughs> excuse me. But then I'll go back and uh, touch them up before I put everything in the kiln. And make sure that nothing is, uh, uh, nothing is uncovered. You think the sorting hat is rigged? Everyone you know is a Hufflepuff. My brother's a Slytherin. I've actually never taken the test. I think I, um, I probably am a Hufflepuff. I, I, I like to think I'm a uh, Ravenclaw. Well, I'm making a Hufflepuff mug back here that's orange and red, so you, you can have whatever color you want with your Hufflepuff.
we got another travel mug. I don't know if Keith is still here. But I'm working on your mug. You need a yellow Slytherin mug, yeah. That'll be about as bad as the uh, uh, the yellow Dark Mark mug I made. It was like a like, uh, black, drippy over yellow. The person that I just told the person they were, you're, you're confused, aren't you? You're a, you're a Hufflepuff Death Eater? Even Death Eaters need to show their school pride. Sherry, thank you for the follow. And welcome to the studio. Let's not drop this. Now this one will be solid green. I know that much. I know what color this one is. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I could, I don't think that would be all that bad. Like, something Charlie Brown related, I mean, I think technically that, you know, that, that is copyrighted, but it depends on what you want to do. There's wiggle room with everything. Like, you know, if I wanted to do like a yellow and, br the yellow and black mug with the black zigzag in the center, you know, that, that's. I think that could work. Oh, okay. You know, I, I meant to ask about that earlier. Yeah, there's no telling. Like, I'm waiting on something, too, that should have been here Monday, but it just says, it's been delayed. Your package has been delayed. Your package is still delayed. I think that's a, a new way of saying it's lost. Game on, girl, your, your Amazon Prime hasn't updated. Oh, are you, like, uh, still sub to somebody else? Or did you just now uh, get an Amazon Prime account? Chicken salad, hello. 
I have been streaming for almost five years. It'll be five years next month. I can't believe that it's been five years. Yeah, I don't know why it went that direction, though. I mean, I guess at least we have tracking. No, Moose, we've had that happen before. We've had that happen a lot, actually. They'll say it's delivered, and then it'll show up the next day. All right, this thing needs to be the uh, black over green, so I think I can dip this entirely in, in the bucket here. I think I've got enough. Maybe. Come on. There we go. It's more where I guess the wax didn't work as well on this one, but at least I'm not having to scrub to get this off. All right, awkward. There we go. All right, that was the green. Well, thank you, chicken salad, for the follow. I think we've done pretty good for our genre and for the, you know, type of stream we are. We're at what, what are we actually at? What are our follows? I can't see it right now. Are we at like close to 13,000 follows or is it 14,000? Right now we started on November 11th in 2015. Wow, we are... Almost at 13k. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. And you know what I love even more about that? I love saying that like we almost have double the amount of follows than we have people living in our town. We have in our town we have around like a 7,000 people population of 7,000. So we like are almost double that. That is that is so hilarious to me. Oh, you think it went there because of cause it's going to New Zealand, okay? Because, yeah, normally most things that go um, to Europe, and so it's not going to Europe, is but they go uh, to down to Miami, but that's different. Let's see. The red should be underneath this one, so we'll get that out. And we have fans all around the world, right? Now this one is red, and you can you can tell that this one uh, is red. It's um. It's just a lighter color of red, but this is what it's going to look like when it's done. The uh, um, it'll be kind of a bright cherry red. And so while I'm here, I'm going to dip these guys and let them run. The red over the black. International Pottery Loving Club, yes. So it's not just pottery, but it's it's the mood here. Well, thank you guys. I always say it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to be creative when if you're if you're being all angsty and, and upset about stuff. So that's kind of the the vibe I try to give off and. And two, like, you know, creating things, for me, like, if I am upset about something, like, the act of, of making things, that's kind of the repetitive motion, 
can be relaxing enough and focusing enough that, that you kind of can let go of other things. So, um, is this a song that you can't hear right now, or is it, um, are you not signed in to the Amazon Music widget? Yeah, Moose, that's awesome. It's the only stream you ever watch that you can safely stream at work, because there's no cursing, yeah. Except there's an occasional uh, curse word mug revealed. Like, it seems like so long ago now, but it was. Like, when we uh, fixed up this building, it was, we got it in 2014 and fixed everything up. And by the fall, we had everything, like, the way we wanted it. And we had an official opening, grand opening ceremony and all this and that by the Chamber of Commerce and stuff. And um, so we had uh, everybody from around town here. We had... Uh, one of, one of the local preachers came in, and they always have somebody, like, uh, uh, say a prayer over, over the place, you know. And so we had had all that, and people were coming through and giving tours. And so, all you know, all the, all the public figures came to, to show their support for the new business. You know, you know, good stuff, you know. Very good for, for you know, community support. But I remember, so my mother was here, and we were talking about what we did and why we did it and who we sold to. And they're like, you know, here's one of my most popular mugs. It was like some of the knitting mugs, the I knit so I don't kill people. The I tried to show nice ones, you know, and not bad ones because I had some religious leaders of my community in here. And here's my mother. No, show them your most popular one. Show it to them. Mama, Mama, he's a preacher. I don't want to get in trouble. Show it, show it to him. It'll be funny. And that's how I started showing the curse word bugs to the Chamber of Commerce. And right, yeah, everybody has a sense of humor. Or can have a sense of humor. Or at least be polite. No, he was funny. He was a... Um, so when I remember when we did the uh, ribbon cutting, I don't know if we still have that ribbon. I called it the, uh, um, the we called it the unholy ribbon, because they they you know they stretch you across your your uh, the front of your building. We have a big ribbon and a big bow, and they give you this massive pair of scissors to to cut it for the grand opening. And they were um, gonna I didn't know they were gonna say a prayer, <laughs> so they were all they're taking a picture. They're like, yay, let's go! Okay, all right, I cut the ribbon. And so we cut the ribbon, and then they were like, let's bow our heads in prayer. And he started the prayer off by saying, Lord, I wish we'd wait to to cut the ribbon. I wish we'd wait to uh, to to bless bless this building before we cut the ribbon. But let's go <laughs> go on now. And it was <laughs> oh, it was funny. So we were all laughing during the during the blessing. So so we we kept the unholy ribbon. The unblessed ribbon. Mo yeah, most preachers, you know, have a pretty good sense of humor, even if they never say it out loud, right? You, you kind of have to. Yes, no, we, yes, we own the building, or we, you know, make payments on it. But I'll never forget that. I need the red for this uh, this Hufflepuff mug, but it needs to be orange first. Um, so I'm going to do the iron.
So this is the iron glaze, and this is one that I still make myself from scratch. It's one of the very first glazes I ever made. And when it is like super thick, it, it looks like this. It's got a lot of uh, variation in it. And um, but normally I don't do it this thick though. I was trying to get it to, to like um, drip on this one. But it has like when even like this is really thick, but when it's uh, thinner, you can still see all the different colors in it. So you can see the the green, the brown, the reds, the blacks in it. So it's, it's, it's really fun to look at. <laughs> you're, you're forever terrified that I'm going to tip a bucket with the stirrer. Only time we've ever spilt a bucket, well, twice now. Only two times we've ever, like, uh, spilled a bucket. One, Kiba did it because he, like, jumped on top. He was on the bucket when it had a lid on it, but he jumped down and kicked it, and it wasn't full enough to support that, that girth. And he, um, he knocked it over. The other one was, not, you know, what, last week or week before last? I was, um, mi I was mixing a bucket and the bottom fell out. So I had to do some, some quick work to keep from losing my entire bucket of, of orange, of all things. Yeah, the bottom cracked a little bit. Like, I, it, it started as a slow leak, and then, like, by the time I got it out, I saw that, like, the entire, like, bottom of the uh, bucket, like, around the bottom had, had a crack in it. that with this way. How do I get the glaze as thick as it was on the other mug? Do I double dunk, dunk for longer? Yeah, double dip. I'll let one layer dry, then add some more, and then, um, I've learned to kind of control the drips a little bit. Like, you see all the, the chunky stuff I've got on the edge here that's, like, super... Like, it, it's not runny at all, and it's a little bit drier because it's just the, the stuff that splatters on the edge and dries. Um, I take some of that stuff, and I will, like, go around the, the edge and kind of concentrate some of the drips in certain areas. It's Sometimes they, they run all the way off the pot. They do. That's why I don't do those much anymore because they're just too risky. But, um... That being said, I do have to do a couple more of them because I had a special order for them. But yeah, so you, you can control the drips to a certain extent. And if I practice with it a lot more, I'm sure I, I would get much better at, at learning how much glaze I need to put on something. But but each glaze is different because each, each one runs a little bit differently. I'm going to check on the orientation of this glaze to see if it needs to be like drippy or not. Yep, no, it's drippy. Lamb chops or steak for dinner? Hmm. 
I don't know that I've had lamb chops, you know? I don't know that I have. So I would vote steak. I don't know, I, I would vote lamb chops, because I'll try something new. It's, su it's summertime, isn't it? For you, spring, summertime? Yeah, it's been a little bit chilly here, so I had uh, I made some vegetable beef stoop, soup. If you don't grow up with it, people some people don't like it. I don't know that I have, I don't know that I've ever had any. All right, I've got to find the orange. It's yellow. Or maybe that was clear. That's yellow, because it's mostly empty. Should know where the orange bucket is. It's in the like, brand new one, because I had to change out the bucket. Oh, um, well, I need both of these, don't I? So it's I had to think for a second what that one was. Really, maybe a, a finer grain would be sweeter than beef. So this is orange. You can also kind of tell what color this is. Do I have anything orange back here? Here we go. Of course I do. This is the uh, the pink over the orange, but this is the orange that's in the bucket. So it, it's, it's bright. I gotta look at this. It says orange over red now. I'm gonna see if it'll work the other if it's supposed to be the other way around. What glaze has the most dramatic color change from bucket to fired? I would say probably the green, because the green is just like a gray, like nothingness color, and then it turns green. Ice cream bowls, yes.
let's see. Charlie, you, you like the orange? The orange and pink, like, they, they don't look bad together. Like, I didn't, didn't know they would turn out that well. They're just, they're, they're very bright. We, this is, there is a pig bowl back here, yes. It's going to be solid pink, of course. Aw, your Dotson just ran into the bedroom at top speed to remind you she hadn't been tucked in for bed. Aw. Okay, no, I should have done the red. I'm, I'm glad I checked. It needs to be orange over red. So let me get the red back out. There it is. Felgar, thank you for the raid. Welcome. How are you doing? Haven't heard from your dog all day. Oh, he's been busy. You bought him a, a cannon bone. All right, let's dip this one in red, and then I'll put the orange away and go to the blue, because I need the blue underneath that, uh, underneath the orange. All right, sorry, no orange yet. Ooh, you just started early access for Baldur's Gate. I heard other people talking about that. What do you think of it? So the way the glaze works, does that mean that I can put lighter colors over darker ones without them discoloring? Um, it really depends what's on the mug, what's on the what the color it is you're you're layering. Um, as a general rule of thumb, it's you know, if you put black over something, it's going to be dark, and not everything that you put over black is is going to show up. It just depends. Like um, white over most things will get will change a little bit. It'll look like kind of like a, a, an icing on like a um, glaze icing over like a darker cake it, you'll see you'll be able to see through it a little bit but um but there's some colors that just disappear under the dark over the darker ones so not every glaze is opaque every glaze is different which is why I kind of test all of them but some lighter ones do show up over the darker ones some change color altogether and um and some some are just opaque so But with the way I glaze them, like, you know, like I said, dipping them, letting it dry, then doing another layer, that lets me apply the glazes and thickly without them, uh, like, peeling off. All right, Moose, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. Glaze chemistry at 2200 degrees. So this is the Mana Blue. Th I, okay, so you asked me which one changes the most. This one. This is a fairly new one, but look at it. It's pink. But it's going to be a dark cobalt blue like this one. That's what it's going to be, that, that dark blue color at the bottom. That's what this glaze is. 
And like we were talking, somebody was saying that like, so I know like I've got cobalt carbonate here that does some some blue and black, but somebody said like um, no, I have cobalt oxide. That is this is probably made with cobalt carbonate because it's pink. Enamel's the same way, yeah, because a lot of the same pigments are used in the in, in enameling and in uh, glaze colors. Though um, enameling uses a lot more just just glass. Sometimes like those ground up the fritz. Now that you mention it, now that I think about it again. This is the uh, the tankard, the D20 tankard that's going to be in the mana blue. Careful now. The amount of tea, it will hold 32 ounces at least. That one will probably hold a little bit more, honestly. That mug is bigger than your mug. Well, Young Khan, thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Oh my gosh, how are you doing? Blonde Duchess, Ian, hey, Young Khan. Welcome, raiders, and good evening. How's everybody doing this? Is it, is it Wednesday? I think it, I think it's Wednesday. I think it is Wednesday. So what I'm doing here is I am um, glazing these pieces. So these are all pieces that I've made on stream and I'm glazing them now, adding the color. They've all been fired once and then uh, tomorrow I'm going to put them in the kiln again. So this one is an order. So most of the pieces here are ordered. This is a mug that says Accio Coffee and the color I'm dipping it in here, this is actually blue. So I know it looks pink right now, but it's, it's going to be blue. get this in here and get it cleaned up. So it's Wednesday-ish. It's still Wednesday. Yeah. Are, are you really colorblind? So come back on Saturday. You'll see the stuff come out of the kiln. It's actually uh, this this blue right here to get all the dust off of it. You can actually see it. It's that dark blue on the bottom is what this color is. It's uh, the cobalt carbonate is what uh, gives it its color, and cobalt carbonate is pink in its dry form. So let's do one more thing here.
because if y'all have not seen a uh, young con stream he is amazing illustrator drawer artist and uh he's gonna be doing a few emotes for us Yeah, and then let's see, do I have anything actually completed where I can show you what the final color is going to look like? So uh, this is the base for what we call our mana blue. Let me get my little bowl out here. This was actually the test piece, but I've got to get all the dust off of it. So I'm going uh, to, I'm, dipping, I'm dipping these pieces in the, the solid uh, blue here, and then we are going to layer another color of blue on top, and you get this kind of electric uh, blue floating on top of the darker blue. And we call that the mana blue. You can check that out up on our website. I have some um, mana mugs in stock, which are there. Are uh, there? Uh, it's like a little like bottle that says mana. We have a mana, a health, and a stamina mug. Little potion bottles. So let's get this with some blue on it. There we go. Super thick glaze. Now I need to get out the pink for the pig I'm making. And then what else? You can get the jade out again. I've got my buckets on rollers, but sometimes they don't roll. We got lots of different colors to choose from. Yeah, you're surprised you caught me this late. I, it, it depends on what I'm doing at the studio, like whether I'm working this late or streaming this late. But sometimes like a glaze day is like an all day event and it'll be all day tomorrow too. Just filling up the kiln. We'll put uh, like 75 to 100 pieces in the kiln at a time. And it's just a lot of like dunking things in a bucket and letting each layer dry and then just continually like adding a layer of glaze here or there. To set up a dog crate. Oh. What kind of dog? But I know, I know you've got to go. We'll catch you later. Ooh, that's, that's yeah, big crate. It's a Scooby-Doo. All right. So this is the, the jade, and this is uh, one that I still make myself. I will. I will take care of everybody. I'll probably put them all to sleep. There we go. So this is the jade glaze, and this is actually one that um, probably looks the closest now to what it's going to look like after it's done. Yeah, have a good night, and thank you again for the raid. Um, it is almost, it's like 10 till 11 here. It's 1048. Charlie, yeah, Charlie, you don't count. <laughs> Though it is true, Charlie's talking to us from the future. So the uh, jade is, is, this is what it looks like by itself. And so it's not that much different from, from the bucket. But it is the... Um, Half of the jade and iron combo, which we call, uh, sometimes we call it the Carlsbad. Because we're trying to give fancy names to all of our colors. Here we go. Here we go. I need my um, me measuring cup. There it is. Oh, oh, yeah, from, from someone, uh, can someone from the past please remind you to put the rubbish out because uh, you, you didn't remember, yeah. So with these, I'm putting the uh, green on the inside and then 
letting it drip down a little bit on the uh, um, outside of the mug. And this is a, a runny combo, so it will run a little bit more than that. And it'll look similar to this one. So where the overlap, it'll drip a little bit more. And you get just a little bit of a color variation. It's where it, it overlaps some and then uh, blends a little bit. And this is where it's very, um, like it, it really matters whether what color you put on first. If I had put down the jade first and then tried to overlap it with the iron, it would look completely different. The iron would just cover up the jade and they would not blend. So, But this is the, the Carlsbad uh, combo where it's uh, the, the jade over the iron drippy. And then I've got... The same glazes, but if I just put them side by side, which I did on one of the mugs, then there's not as much variation, but still, it's it's more of a, a stripe. Like a melty icing cupcake, yes. And some of these, like the uh, the blue that I just did, some of the like the black ones that are here, um, a lot of these mugs, I want to let them dry out overnight and then then layer another layer on top of them. Sometimes if I get started early in the day, uh, like before noon, and start dipping these, like I can get an entire glaze done in one day. But when, um, when I don't get started till like after supper, then the uh, uh, layers of glaze don't usually have enough time to. Uh, to dry out and what happens if I layer things uh, but except for this one Th this glaze like for some reason I, I can layer it and make it thick and it's fine but anything with the black on it I think is is an issue for whatever reason if I layer things too quickly before one layer dries the glaze will start peeling off There's that one. There we go. And so once I do get all of these with uh, uh, layers of glaze like this one, I've got uh, two layers on here and it's not quite dry yet, but it's dry enough I can touch. I will go through and there's a little bit of like spots on the bottom, like this has got the wax on it so the glaze didn't stick, but there's, there's a little bit that's dripped and dried right there. So I will clean that up, make sure there's nothing there, and then clean up the drips around the, uh, the edge of the medallion. How much uh, glaze waste can a, a water bucket take before it becomes a problem? Um, usually, like, when... It depends on the glaze. So sometimes I clean out a bucket. Like, if I do a, a lot with the iron and the black, then I'll change it, change out the water bucket before I start doing something that's white. Because then I'm just smearing, like, light gray and, and light brown stuff all over a piece and then trying to dip it in the white. Um... Whereas if I do have a lot of white to do, then that's not really going to bother anything. Um, but yeah, so sometimes I, there's like you can get like a half inch of like crud at the bottom before you can uh, you really have to ch change it out. Let's put the lid on that one. And I think pretty much everything else can wait until tomorrow. Um, but we've got a wide variety of things here. Today has been a busy day. Uh, we've gotten, I think we've gotten a lot done. 
And this is like, it kind of, sometimes when I, when I'm throwing, like I will throw a lot of things in one day and then depending on the weather, I may not get to finish them until the next day. But usually with a glaze, like I, I try to get everything done all at once. And, and sometimes it's because I don't have to stop. Like I, I can like continue to glaze like uh, almost everything. And then the, the glaze days are when I have to like make myself take a break sometimes. Um, no, I honestly, I'll be finishing this up tomorrow and I'll probably start working on another glaze. Get two glazes uh, done. That way I can get some of the pe these pieces processed and then go back to throwing uh, over the weekend. So those are my plans. And we'll see how things go. Because... You know, half the time my plans don't work, so we'll just see what what tomorrow brings. But I will get this glaze done, and then then we'll get back to making more things. But guys, I might it's it's almost eleven o'clock here, so I think I'm gonna say goodbye. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I um. We'll be back probably, um, I don't know if I'll be back in the morning. I may just be the afternoon. Depends. I may get this finished up and, and started and then start working on another one before I start streaming. But again, thank you so much for watching. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow's technically my day off, but I think I'll be back here because I'm working on the glaze. So we'll finish this up. And then uh, this one, if I fire it tomorrow, which is Thursday, we'll be able to open it on. Uh, at the very least Saturday morning like I probably could open it Friday night if I fire it during the day tomorrow but um because it takes eight to nine hours to reach temperature and then another 24 hours to cool down so so we'll just open it up on Saturday and not not burn any fingers so guys have a wonderful evening and again thanks for watching